Guys, how we doing? You can see the big Kubota here. We are gonna give Rippin another shot today. You can see this. This is something new on the tractor. We talked about it before, but I got this on Amazon. I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. So let's get to it. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Okay, so we're about a month later than the last time we tried ripping when we were pulling out frozen sections of earth, <laughs> four to six inches wide. So. We did some deep ripping with the 1025 a few days ago. We're gonna be in good shape. The weather can't make up its mind what it's gonna do. I got a lot of projects. A lot of guys comment, well, you should wait for it to dry out. You should wait for it to be a little bit wetter. You should wait for it to be warmer, colder, whatever it is. I have way too many things to do to wait for the perfect scenario to happen. So we're just trying to get things done and let's see if the equipment can handle it. So this hydraulic top link right here, I got off of Amazon, all right? And I think it was $300 and change. It came with the hoses and the fittings, everything that you see, the whole uh, cylinder and the rod and, and just whatever. So I just popped off the top link, just the manual top link that I had on there, put this on. Now, this was a really tight fit in between our steel, uh, kind of in that clevis position there. It took a decent amount of in and out. If we would have had a file, it would have been nice to file down just a smidge to get it in there. It was almost like the paint had to wear off all the metal just to get it snug right in. But we got it on there now and in place. Now these fittings came with it and they happened to work, which that doesn't happen very often. So that was a bonus too. Had to tighten everything down, had a couple leaks going on uh, right around here, but that's minor. Everything's working just like it should. And this also gave us a little bit more stroke length compared to our standard top link because the ripper that we're gonna hook up to, I had to max this thing out and I actually unthreaded the rod too far the first time I did it and separated the two pieces of top link. So this is gonna give us what we need to hook up to the attachment. But if you've watched our videos, you see how often we adjust the angle of three-point attachments. And you can do that with the manual top link with a box blade, a, a grader blade, lamb plane, tiller, ripper in this case but i was doing that by hand which you're just manually rotating it around it's kind of a pain to do and this lets you do everything from the operator seat so if you want to try to adjust an angle to get better performance or dig more or or dig less just scrape along the surface those are easy adjustments to make you do need additional hydraulics on the back of your tractor to do so so if you're looking for those hydraulics we do partner with summit hydraulics which is a diy solution center really they have all sorts of hydraulic solutions that you can do on your own we'll put a link to their website down below and you can also save five percent using code gwt we'll put a link to these hydraulic top links on Amazon too. I'm not gonna say this is the highest quality. I don't think it is. The paint was uh, scuffed up a decent amount, but as long as it performs and works like we need it to do, it's gonna get the job done. All right, so we're using this subsoiler. This is an HD subsoiler. This thing weighs 450 pounds. It is a absolute tank, all right? And so the first time we did this, we ended up busting off one of the shear bolts. We're gonna go ahead and pop one of those in there now too and get to our project, which is gonna be doing a deep rip along uh, a perimeter of this field that we're standing in right now. I wanna put in a screening fence, which we're gonna do, I don't know, mid to late May, maybe early June. That stuff's gonna grow well over 10 foot tall. I'm excited to see how it performs. But the point of this property is just to play around with equipment, have fun, try things out. And if I was normally planning the screening plot i probably wouldn't use this tool i'd just till it up and i think we'd be just fine but i want to have a chance to play around with it just play around with the tractor show you guys what it's all about and see if there's an application for you that it might work for now the idea behind a subsoiler is to break up hard pan all right so if you have a field or a path or somewhere else that's been driven over compacted down for years for a long period of time you can rip way down help the drainage issues um, open up that ground again turn things over get different soil terrain in there. It's not made to be used all the time, but it's made for specific applications, specific projects and needs. And there's just not many other tools you can put behind a tractor to do this kind of work. Now on attachments to this size, you'll start to see category one and category two hookups. And so this is gonna be what this machine has here too. And when these bars come down, when you're kind of gonna kind of mount in between a couple steel plates, that's called a clevis. And it's a stronger way to do it versus just having a single pin stick out that you attach to. And for a lot of compact tractors and smaller uh, subcompact tractors, that's just fine. Once you start to get to the bigger equipment, this is just a more robust way to build and connect to a piece of equipment. And so you can even see on the pin, there's two different sizes there. So this is a category one size, this is a category two size. And for a visual reference as well, you can see category one spacing is closer and category two spacing is further away. So if you're looking for a little bit more information on what that's about, hopefully that helps you out. Alrighty, so this is a shear bolt. And this is a big shear bolt, 
but this is what we're using in the ripper and what we already broke the first time around when the ground was frozen i'm hoping we don't do it again this is a grade two all right so it's the softest grade that you can get i did buy a couple grade fives i know some of you gave me some flack for doing that and yes you should use what the manufacturer recommends which is a grade two here it just broke so quickly the first time around that i felt like we weren't gonna get anything done if I end up going through grade two after grade two after grade two. Anyway, we're starting with a grade two. Get that put in here, get to work and see how it goes. a down and a back pass the ground is not frozen we still could not fully put this ripper all the way down so they do make a long and a short version i'm thinking the short version may be the way to go we probably had it up a few inches uh, at most now we ran into some obstacles along the way too you know again when we were out here originally this was an overgrown field had a lot of huge huge gigantic autumn olive and other shrubs too and so we ran into a handful of big root bases that were down in there and that's when the tractor really stalled i had four-wheel drive engaged i had locking rear differential engaged but there were just still some times when i had to raise it up a bit and you can see the amount of trash that this thing collects too there was one point when i had such a huge trash ball on one of these tines i had to back up and hop over it and go around and reset myself but this hydraulic top link that's on here Man, that's a cat's meow. I have one on my 4720, also on my 4066 when I had that. I'd highly encourage you to look into that if you have the extra hydraulics in the back of your tractor. You can get something called a hydraulic top and tilt so you can exchange, if you have enough remotes, one of the side links for an additional hydraulic cylinder too. But a feature like that, an accessory like that, really simplifies things, enhances the experience, the flexibility for the operator and all sorts of different applications. Okay, so for us, next step is gonna be to do some more final preparation. That was a deep ripping, all right? So really loosen up the compaction if there, if there was any going on down two foot underneath the surface. Now we're gonna mix everything else up on top and get it ready to seed later this spring. So another useful application that I can see myself 
using one of these tools in the future is going to be for some more driveway preparation, um, trying to really rip out and get down to that substrate, get off all the topsoil, and just make life easier. So I can see that being another very handy application. So this is a Dirt Dog attachment made in the USA. We're a Dirt Dog dealer. If you're looking for something like this big ripper subsoiler, you need something else for your tractor, set of pallet forks, a grapple a box blade, a tiller, a snow pusher, whatever it is, we can help. We sell and ship all over the country. Check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoy watching tractors in action, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.